Okay guys, we need to talk. There are two guy rules I keep seeing being broken. Number one, men do not talk in the bathroom. We don't talk anywhere else either, but especially not in the bathroom. There's a reason it's not called a chat room. When nature calls, we answer it and hang up, period. I just came back from this conference at this really big hotel that had huge bathrooms, and I kid you not, on the second day, I walk into the bathroom and this guy's like, Hey, uh, what kind of cameras does the tech team use to film the talks? I was wondering what kind of cameras. You see, this guy, he's a man who seizes the moment. Come hell or tight bladder, this guy has to have an answer for his question. Never mind the context. Honey, our, our son is about to be born. No, I must ask the question. They kidnapped your wife, and they're on the phone now to talk about the ransom. I must know what camera it is! We salute you, question man. From our stinky stalls with our half rolls of toilet paper, we salute you. Now turn in your man card. We have to ignore each other in the bathrooms. I don't care if you're being mugged and you're crying out for help. I will only call the police when I'm done washing my hands. Thank you. Those of you who make small talk in bathrooms, do you really imagine like the other parties thinking, oh golly, I'm so glad this person is talking to me right now. What refreshing banter. What lovely conversation. How uplifting this majestic awkwardness. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for breaking the golden bathroom silence. No, we have to accept that certain moments are awkward. It is what it is. We can't change it. Sharing an elevator for two minutes with nothing to look at except our feet. Yes, it feels like an eternity, but it has to be awkward. Accept it. The weather's fine. Yes, water tends to fall from the sky when it rains. Thank you for pointing that out. Now, can we be quiet? Men can't multitask. Don't ask us to carry our side of the conversation and die a little on the inside at the same time. It's not possible. Rule number two, men do not talk about cooking in social settings. You like baking and recipes. We get that. It's okay. No one's perfect. You gotta deal with it, but don't bring it up. Here's the scenario. A small party over at someone's house. The ladies are over in their corner talking about the various forms of backstabbing. The men are in their corner talking about guy stuff. That movie is so awesome, and the spoiler is even more awesomer. Awesomest. Awesomest? So I ended up fixing the transmission on my car using a Flintstones Band-Aid. Yes. Awesome. So me and the wife are thinking of buying a house. So we have something to pass on to the grandkids. The debt, that is. <laughs> and that's when Ted feels like he has to speak up. Yeah, so I've been testing with a lot of recipes. I usually end up making too many servings, and then we have to eat delicious roast beef for a couple of days. <laughs> that's it. You've done it, Ted. Good for you. This is like tap dancing on a bear trap. There's no way this can end well. The conversation dies in both groups. The men are thinking, where can we hide his body? And the women are like, what? There's a man who cooks? Who is this angel of light? It's the bro code. Guys do not put other guys in hot spots. We simply don't do it. And now take a wild guess how the drive home is gonna be for all the other men in the living room. Oh my goodness, did you know that Tina's husband cooks for her? That's so awesome. Why don't you do that? Well, I did actually make supper for your parents that once. Yes, you made granola with milk and my mother is lactose intolerant. She could have died. Yeah, I know, right? Ladies, listen, when a guy wants to take you out to a restaurant, that's his way of saying, I love you so much, I want to feed you. And he's recognizing that he doesn't have the skill that it takes, so he's paying this really talented person to make you something nourishing or pizza. It's totally a sign of love, not failure. You totally want to marry a guy like this. Not the other guy who walks around in a food coma. Oh, Tracy, what did you put in these cookies? Is that cinnamon or asparagus? And we're all thinking, would you just Choke to death on that? Really, would you just gag? How delicious to call 911 and be like, uh, would you send an ambulance please? This guy in my house is choking to death on a cookie with cinnamon and then give them the wrong address. Oh, we live in Cleveland. Goodness, the ambulance is probably halfway to Las Vegas by now. Welp, Tina, give me some more cookies, would you?